all right welcome back so in this video i'm going to be going over the master cam flow chart so this is something that i've created to help guide you step by step what to do in the beginning of every exercise so everything that you do if you follow this flow chart it will guide you step by step and you won't get lost in case you missed a step or not so this is very important i've been including this since version x8 in all of my dvds because i really want people to understand it and if they forget that you know forget any step they can go back to this flow chart and see what they have missed now i highly suggest you print this out this fits on one eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and have that in front of you especially if you're a beginner in master camp this is a pdf file so it is included in your exercise files folder so go ahead print it down download it and have it in front of you like i said especially if you are a beginner so let's go over this real quick the first thing you want to do basically is select a machine type whether it's mill or lathe etc I'm going to go to master cam real quick and go to the machine tab right here. So to select a machine tab, you would come over here to this section right here. There's actually six of them, but really four, five of them are actually machine type. There's a mill, which includes the 3D mill and the multi-axis, lathe, mill turn, wire, and the router. So for our sake over here, we've selected the mill default. So if I select mill and select default, this will show up over here. Usually what will show up is the machine group and the properties which is the mill default we have selected over here. And whenever you start selecting and creating toolpath, all of this will show up as you start creating toolpath. So that's how you select a machine type. Basically, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's milling, lathe, uh, that's the machine type. Now let's go back to our um, flow chart. And the next thing to do is create a geometry solid or just import a part. So if I go back to Mastercam right now, um, to create a solid or to create a solid, you would go to the solid tab and you create it over here. To create geometry or wireframe, you'd create it here. And you can use that to create actually surfaces or solids. So you can use any of these, whether you're creating wireframe, surfaces, or solid. You can create the machining operation using all three of these tabs, okay? Uh, some people like to create solids so they can see their part really nice. Some people just create surfaces, which is very similar to what I've created here. These are just surfaces, as you can see. It's not a solid part uh, because all I care about is machining the outside here, not the inside okay and also you can create a solid which will be a full block from there but you can really uh, create just a wireframe so just like a wireframe this is a wireframe right here the lines going all the way around this is a wireframe you can actually create only wireframe and machine only to that wireframe so you don't actually need to create surfaces or solids all right and if you don't have a basically a designing software a 3d software like solidworks for example uh, that's what you would have to do if you do have that, the last step that you can do actually is import a part. So you can import a pair of solid, for example, an IGES file, a SOLIDWORKS file, straight into Mastercam and start machining off of that file. So the next step is to define your tool settings and the stock setup. So again, if I go back to Mastercam, that's located under the properties. If you expand that, you will see the tool settings and the stock setup. So if you click on that, you'll have options to basically select all of your tool settings uh, the material, all of that feed rate, even the sequence number in the program, and define the stock. So what is the stock that you're starting out with? For example, this red dash is all around, and the red solid geometry at the bottom, and you see how it's connected? That's actually my block. That's actually my stock. So the next thing to do is define the stock. What stock are you using? So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that and go back to my flowchart real quick. The next thing to do is select your toolpath. So whatever you're doing, your contour, your drilling, uh, your turning, whatever you're doing, you select your first one. Usually, obviously, if you're familiar with CNC, you would start out with roughing the part or facing the part, and then you would go from there to finishing off your part. So that's your toolpath. So you would keep repeating all of those toolpath uh, until you're done. Now, really the toolpath, it's whether you're actually selecting a geometry or you're selecting a uh, solid or a surface that's what you would do you would select uh the G the toolpath so first you would select uh the contour whatever you're trying to uh, finish for example if i minimize my part uh this would be my toolpath if i select this that means i'm telling i want to machine this entire area okay but that's not entirely the toolpath the toolpath is really selecting the geometry that's being guided to machine your part as well as all the features on that okay so i'll go back to uh, the flow chart Next thing to do is select the geometry you will be cutting with the selected toolpath. So for example, you've selected your toolpath. Really selecting the toolpath, all you're doing is going to toolpath over here, 
and selecting one of these, for example, drill. The next thing it will ask you, it will ask you, okay, what do you want me to drill? So you would come over here and say, I want to drill uh, a hole over here, for example, or at the center. You would guide it by a point or by a hole or by a big circle, okay? And that's the next step you would do in your flow chart. So again, selecting the toolpath, uh, even though the toolpath itself is the entire operation, selecting the toolpath in here in the flow chart, meaning just selecting the feature that you're trying to use. Next thing, you would select the geometry that you will be cutting with the selected toolpath, okay? Uh, so the next step after that is going to select the appropriate options in the parameter page. So let me go ahead and expand that for you, expand one of the toolpath for you, and you will see that there's parameters. So every toolpath will have all these parameters where you have to come in, select whether you're roughing or finishing, for example, the tool, the holder, um, the stock, stock to leave, and all of these are options. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that and go back to my uh, Mastercam flowchart. So you select all the appropriate options. That's actually where you'll spend most of your time selecting these features. After you're done doing all of that, you would verify and back plot the toolpath. So you basically do that by going over here and selecting back plot or verify. And you would go to the Mastercam simulation from there and view your toolpath. For example, if I select one of my toolpath over here and then select verify selected operation, the Mastercam simulation will open up the simulator and it will get you uh, to view or preview how your part will be machined. So this is my first operation, for example, not the full operation. It's just showing me how it's roughing my part. So basically I view that, I look at it, make sure the tool's not jamming anywhere. Uh, you know, there's no collisions in any shape or form that I'm using the right tool, for example, and it's machining the way that I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and forward that all the way so I can see that when it's finished. So after it's done, if it looks exactly like you want, you would go to the next step. If it doesn't, you would go back and finish that. So that's really the part being roughed out for me. To me, it looks very good. There's no collisions. Collisions will show up in red color. And so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that and go back to my flow chart. So everything looks good. I verified it. Everything looks good as expected. If no, I would make changes to the parameters. I would go back to the parameters, click on it, make changes and keep doing this until everything is good. Now, since this is my last step, if I want to create more toolpath, I would basically repeat the yellow areas. So see the yellow blocks indicate an entire operation repeat as necessary for every operation until you have a finished machining your part. So keep repeating this with every toolpath that you need to create until you're done. So once you're done, all you would do is create your NC code from here. To do that, I will have a separate video for that, but basically you would come over here to the G1, you'd select it, and you would create your G code from there. And obviously that's exactly why you're creating all of that. So you can take that G code to your machine and run that in the machine as well. So that's an overview of the uh, machining uh, flowchart or the Mastercam flowchart. And uh, please have that in front of you, print that out, especially if you are new to Mastercam. It will help guide you tremendously. I have a lot of people uh, thanking me for creating that and I keep improving on it little by little, uh, you know, as um, different customers ask me to include different things that I might have missed actually in the previously, but I highly suggest you print that out, have it in front of you and uh, let me know if you would like me to add things or that I've missed things that you would like me to add to the flowchart. But uh, this should be a very, very good start for you, especially if you are new to Mastercam.